Hey guys, it's Mr. Dragon Triple Zero here, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the ASYM Desane 3.0T. This vehicle is an attempted recreation of driver San Francisco's undrivable car you see in the game's cutscenes. Now it's able to be driven since I've made it in this game and to be exported to BMG Drive. Despite taking a few days to build, from getting the exterior right, to having a full-fledged interior with some functionality, rather than slapping the interior fixtures and calling it a day. As you see with the interior, it's got your manufacturer's badge and a steering wheel, the AirLink media system, seatbelt buckles, the hazards button, driving aids, and many more of this exquisite vehicle. It has a lap time of 1 minute 32 seconds 8 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear test track and exactly 2 minutes 32 seconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 161 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 6.55 seconds. This vehicle is powered by a custom 3 liter turbocharged V6 engine that produces 309.7 horsepower and 322 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 23.6 miles per gallon and weighs 4,019.5 pounds or 1,823.2 kilograms. And for the market, it does excellent in the top four markets here, such as the Family Utility Premium, I don't know why that's placed there, the Sports Budget, Family Sports Premium, and Family Sports Car Markets. In terms of how I made the same, the panel material will be made out of partial aluminum with a monocoque chassis made out of light AHS steel. With a front launch digital engine placement, and the front suspension uses a McPherson strut, and the rear suspension uses a semi trailing arm. For the engine, it's a V60 degree V6 engine made out of aluminum with the bore set to 88.5 millimeters and the stroke at 81 millimeters, which gets the engine size to 2,990 cubic centimeters or just under 3 liters if you round it up, with dual overhead cam 4 valves also made of aluminum. For the crankshaft, it's made out of forged steel with lightweight forged com rods and hyperutetic cast because this engine, as you see in the top here, is a carbon tract, which is basically an economical focused engine, kind of like your Ford EcoBoost, GM's Ecotech engines, but this is pretty much the focus of how I built this vehicle to be semi-luxurious, but also economically friendly at the same time. For the compression, it is set at an above normal 9.4 to 1 ratio with the cam profile set to a 45 and VVT at all cams, because why not? We're going to be powerful and economical at the same time, which we go over to the turbochargers here. It's a twin turbo setup because it's the only option with ball bearings with the intercooler set to 446 horsepower. The compressor is set at a 46 millimeters, the turbine a little bit high at a 48 millimeters, meaning a little bit higher than the compressor, and the air ratio set to a 0.775. Five, and the max boost at 14.5 psi. For the fuel system, we're using a direct injection twin configuration with a standard intake running on regular fuel with the fuel mixer set to a 12.9. The initial timing raised it up a little bit to a 65 and the RPM limit set at 7,000 RPM. For the headers, our only option thanks to a turbocharger is a short cast headers with dual exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to a 57.1 millimeters, which is 2.25 inches. And I forgot this uses bypass valves to increase performance because we got ourselves a high flow three-way category and the first muffler is a baffled, and the other is a straight through muffler. Without these bypass valves, then our power will drop down a little bit to a 298.6 horsepower. That is why I put bypass valves to increase power and increase weight and pretty much increase a lot of this and all this is in red, but who cares about that? For the drive type, we're using a rear wheel drive configuration because that's what the Desane uses in Driver San Francisco, which I believe it uses, with an advanced automatic 5-speed with the top speed set to 160.8 miles per hour, even though it can go significantly higher to 183 miles per hour, but I think it's a little bit too unrealistic for this engine and for this particular vehicle, but 161, good enough. For the tires, we're using hard, long-life tires, the radio, by the way, with the front and rear tire width set to 255 millimeters to the front and back, running on 19-inch alloy rims. For the brakes, they're both vented discs front and back, but we're using a three-piston with its size set to 360 millimeters, and all the way in the rear is a two-piston with its size set to 285 millimeters, but the pad type dropped it a little bit to a 40, which leans a little bit towards comfort and brake bias, tune it down a little bit. For the under tray, not so much. semi clad under tray, up the brake fall a little bit, so going on to the interior of this vehicle, which is where I spent my most time on designing this vehicle. We're using a premium interior with a premium sat-nav, aka GPS system, with five seats, 
and getting a closer look with the interior just as premium as we can get the airlink system with a little trademark right here because why not with the climate control system for the temperature with the auto button here volume fan speed uh, my best making a fan on here navigation radio media telephone drive mode turn on trash control ecs even though you can't turn these on at bmg if i can find a functionality to do that which would take a lot of time buying this vehicle but this is an example of the interior spending several days just making it look semi-realistic as possible so going forth with the driver aids and safety we're using an electrical variable power steering with electronic stability control hence the ecs button right there below charge control and advanced 2000 safety standards and last but not least we put the battery back on for the suspension we got progressive springs of gas bundle two dampers with semi-active sway bars running on a normal preset Despite the one and only problem, which is a small notice about the short gearbox reducing the vehicle's top speed, I don't even care about that whatsoever. So let's export this to BMG Drive and test this vehicle out. So here we are at the map of West Coast USA to go on with the driver San Francisco vibes of this vehicle. So taking a brief look at this vehicle, well, right off the bat, the freaking font has exploded in BMG, which is the black font that I downloaded. I forgot the font name, but it's all black in automation. That's where I put the words Desane and the trim 3.0T on the right side of the vehicle, which unfortunately, it's gone. It's blacked out, gone so I don't know why it's there. So with this vehicle, it's kind of interesting. I first designed this back in late 2018, and I pretty much went through development hell and just abandoned this project because of the lack of fixtures to make this realistic as possible. Thanks to these mods, this is now possible. Off to my right, which I'll give you a closer look here, is my original project of the 2018 Desane. So in overall, the vehicle, it's pretty, almost spot on, maybe like 80%, 85% spot on to the driver SF creation of the Desane, but who even cares about that? And briefly, if you would take a comparison between this Desane and this guy over here, you can obviously tell by the rear of the vehicle that these lights, <laughs> they don't even match it one bit. Even the rear trunk lock, this is poking out big time because there were no mods, like mod fixtures for a lock. So get rid of the old Desane, and like I said, for a drag race, we'll do that in a little bit later. So right now, we're going to be doing our base performance test with this vehicle. For our test we're doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, second a 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly a top speed run, which I guarantee with this vehicle here, with this how long this road is, and how fast this vehicle is with this 300 horsepower engine, I guarantee we might make this, even though the top speed has been lowered by 20 miles an hour, but we got an automation of 161 miles per hour rather than 183, which makes it unrealistic in real life with these types of vehicles, but anyways, let's get ready to start our acceleration test right now. In the gas, just as fine. Flying through the first gear, it takes the auto back transmission seamlessly going through these gears. Third gear at 0 to 62 and 5.94 seconds of 307.21 feet. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So for the brake time, um, let me increase this a little bit because these brakes apply a little bit slower thanks to the, how heavy this vehicle is. So brake now. If this becomes a 63, then whatevs. Let's make that a 62. All right, 62 to 0 and 3.16 seconds of 128.22 feet. Like I mentioned the braking, I tried doing this privately, and sometimes if I do set to 62, it goes to like 61 or 63, which was semi-inaccurate, but finally, I got it to be accurate, but with the terms of braking distance and time of the vehicle for a two-ton vehicle, okay-ish, but uh, it's not the best, but seems average. So for a top speed, I screwed up somewheres. Ouch. All right, let's outscrew this up again. So for a top speed run, there we go, right through the toll booth, no problem. So we got a slightly worse 0 to 62 of a 6.02 seconds of 309.34 feet. So we are in gear 5, 120 miles an hour, and we're still going just as fine. Maxed out boost of 14.4 PSI, 140 miles an hour now. And coming up to the exit, 150 miles an hour. Can we reach it before the exit? And the answer is going to be a yes, a solid ass yes. And whoops, that's the e-brake ad. Top speed reached, so find a way to crash it out and drift into the in the gantry. Hold on. And so missed the damn gantry, but just full time it all the way. Get a flip going and another flip, and we're gonna be on the roof or on our four wheels. And there goes all debris, all the fixtures is flying off the vehicle. I thought I was gonna hit the gantry, but whatever. So missed the gantry, impact detected, stopping car, thanks to these hazards going off. Well, has well hazards. What has it going off because impact detected stopping car. That's how it goes. It's been a long time since he's went off. I pretty much forgot my infamous quote by just saying that. So with the front of the vehicle, we got something poking out big time. Is this the brake? I think it seems like this is the brake poking out here. If I look 
deep into the vehicle, so looking inside, we see the brake is poking out big time, protruding like probably 15 feet from the vehicle. Yeah, no, 20 feet from the vehicle. So that is pretty much of a destruction of the vehicle. The rear okay, despite all the brake lights coming off, it's kind of interesting how that happened. Front right, we lost the tire thanks to be miscalculating the crash to hit the gantry, but that is it with this vehicle. So now let's stay on this map here of West Coast USA by going to the infamous racing circuit, the long race circuit here. Let's do the one without the chicane and do, let's do two laps of this thing in the noon hours with this here vehicle. After that, we'll be doing a drag race with the old and new Desane, because why not? So right now, take it to the starting line right now. So here we are behind the start and finish line and almost perfectly in line with a little grid spacing here, but that doesn't even care one bit. So let's get on ready to start off this time trial here in three, two, one, get a launch going, go. A uh, poor launch, but we still accelerate just fine. You know what? Let's put the ECS to uh, sport mode. Try to get the boast of this car here. So let's break right here, 90 miles an hour and reduce and turning into the apex. All right, kicking out the back end thanks to it being rear wheel drive, but we are still doing okay. And don't fail me, ECS, even though it kind of did right there with the reduction speed and getting out of the gas and exceeding track limits. If this was an FIA race, I would definitely get penalized for that, especially if it was Formula One. So the back end really kicks out a lot thanks to uh, the lack of grip here and B just steering the vehicle pretty hard. So get to this here, Chicane, which I always screw up here. Not anymore, and let's see, not anymore, yes, not anymore. Usually that chicane, I always like come in like very hot and very wide, like uh, most occasions with most vehicles I tested this track, so we're gonna go wide. We got gravel, okay, that is new. I don't think this was there before the gravel on the left side of my screen. I think this was just all like regular concrete or something. I think it was just concrete, not gravel. It, 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 it's, it's interesting. If I continue to fail in sport mode, comfort mode, it'll be just wuss out and go to comfort mode. How about this here braking zone here? Let's break around like, um, 450. Brakes, uh, front. Okay, that's some front brakes were fading, but we recover. We got 500 degrees front and back brakes, but we're okay. And two, why is the car like of spontaneously like des decelerating? Is it the ECS kicking in or something? Like I'm accelerating and it's like refused to accelerate. It's breaking the individual wheels there as you see kind of like right there. It might be the ECS, but uh, if it continues to be in the way, I'll just turn it off, which not only that, it turns off trash control. So if I slam on the gas pedal and the wheels spin, well, I'm on my own. Not the computer ain't gonna help me one bit if I turn it off. All right, into the final corner to get a first lap time in the 230s, it seems like. And while I'm at it, let's get an interior view, like, uh, right across the start finish line. So, first lap time, 2 minutes, 29 seconds, 346 milliseconds. So, let me get an interior view. So, how I do that, you hit the forward button on my keyboard, which is the relative view, and just line up to the driver's seat, position yourself, and here you go. That is your interior view, so let's get on ready to resume now. So, let's break early. Pop on the brakes a little, 800 degrees. Still on the brakes, and still managed to get the checkpoint. See, the rear end kicks out a lot with this vehicle if you got it in sport mode. If it's been comfort mode, it'll keep your ass straight as possibly can with the ECS, but we're doing okay, and still ECS is screwing up on me. So the front brakes, we were going around 700 degrees with the front brakes here. We're in the high 500s with the front of the brakes here. Mid, okay, now getting the mid upper 500s in the back. So we're equivalently going hot front and rear brakes. So let's just ease off on the throttle, brake, get into the apex, and mild drift, and we're okay. There we go. Much better than last time to cut it wide into the gravel pit there. And yeah, the turbocharger, everything's going mental, so let's turn off ECS and trash control. So I'm going to be on my own for the last half of this here race. All right, here we go. This could be interesting. So brake now. Six, eight. Expect brake fade. Front brake fade, rear brake fade. And we're deja vu. I'm alive. Okay, starting to get more squirrely with the ECS and trash control turned off, but we are doing okay, as I've been saying, like, past hundreds of times. And second of all, we're still kind of orangey, red hot in the front brakes of the high 500, still fading in the front. It's, hear that fading, hear that brake squeaking, go to O'Reilly Auto Parts, AutoZone, somewhere that carries your brakes, and just replace the brake pads of these vehicles. Should one for carbon to and make things even more unrealistic. Coming up to the final corner, let's go a little bit hot. 
and a little bit salty, a little bit spicy, and out of the corner. So we're going to get a much, much better lap time compared to the first one because we were stopped there. And now we get a second lap time of 2 minutes, 20 seconds, 477 milliseconds, which gets our total time to 4 minutes, 49 seconds, 823 milliseconds, and it's unknown right here. My first place car, I think it's a DJ Quick Pseudo Creep, but yes, it is my world's quickest car based on top speed and acceleration around roughly two seconds. I think like it's a 2.1 second car with a top speed of like 299 miles per hour. So far away from getting first place, but we still placed ourselves on the leaderboard, so who cares about that? So go to free roam, and we're going squirrely and get ready to crash ourselves straight ahead. So fresh here. That was unexpected. So into your view of a crash unexpectedly crashed into a tire, uh, not a tire barrier, but uh, a concrete barrier. So it appears to the structural integrity of the interior, we we survived. <laughs> if this would have been a negative 15 safety and material vehicle, then the interior would basically explode on us. So here's the address the structure of the vehicle. So the rear held up, you got the rear camber going on right here, the rear left tire. You lost the front right tire. This says the tire is gone right here. What if I were try to, what the hell, remove this? So remove the tire. No, it's barely hanging out for some odd reason. But can we still drive just as fine, right? Yes, no. No, it's just the back left tire. It appears to be deflated, but how? We're still putting power down like it's nothing, but uh, like an 80, 90 mile an hour crash. How is this even possible, man? We hit it like in the front right portion of the vehicle. The engine would have basically been exploded. Food would have been all over the track, like oil, radiator fluid, all that good stuff. Well, it's in its misery one more time and... Boom, there we go, good enough. So let's respawn the vehicle here and take you to the drag strip and compare it to the old version of the same versus the new version. So here we are, the drag strip. The old school AS5 I'm just saying is beginning to line itself up. It's gonna break right there. And I also turned off ECFs for both vehicles with this vehicle and this vehicle, the old new Desane. So it's up on the line. I'm gonna line myself up very carefully. Let's do realistic gearbox for myself. So going around three miles an hour, slow it down. Slow it down. Oh, uh, let's just neutral it. And you're ready on the line. There. And go. So compared to the difference between the two, you can obviously tell at a holy dip of the front of the vehicle. Is that because of the transmission or what? So <laughs> I did the horsepower. The old vehicle is like 305 horsepower. And this is a 309 horsepower. So the difference between the two, 105.67 miles an hour of a 13.874 time. He, the old Desane, got a 15.168 time of 101.24 miles an hour. How about between the new school Desane with the Pro Trion, so make things even more challenging for myself. And after that, we'll do a crash test between the new school and the old school Desane to show you, like, the evolution of, like, the j structure of, like, how an automation vehicle back in the day was like compared to a modern-day automation BMG drive vehicle. So turn off ECS structure control for him, too. And get ready on the brakes. One, two, light, and... I swear, go. Wasn't expecting that type of tree, but I'm stupid. So here we go. 0 to 62 time in 5.76 seconds of 303.32 feet. So we're going to be losing. We are going to be losing. Thanks to my hideous reaction time. So we lost. Same speed, 105.62 miles an hour, but he got a better time thanks to my reaction time. But uh, here we go. All right, so here I am, accelerating off the drag strip, and we're going to be doing a head-on crash test at 100 miles an hour. I got the other Desane ready, so get ready to set this bad boy to 100 miles an hour. Right. Now, Hunter, and line myself up, and get a crash test going right now, and slow this down, way down, so I'm kind of off-centered a little bit, but who even cares, so 99 versus 100 miles an hour, which is basically 100 mile an hour crash, so 60 times slow-mo, reset the FOV a little bit, and go. 16, head on, and we are stuck together as expected, so here, full time. Both of the engines still run for some odd reason. The, 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 the drivetrain of this vehicle, I think it's the new, the brand new Desane, is somehow still attached and still running about. And is that something moving or is that... I think it's just me. So let's shut the vehicles off before anything goes sour. I bet turn it off, god dang it. So let's put the vehicles up and it's in the air. Oops. So between the two here, we got a fully smashing front end. And this guy, a little bit worse, but same, still smash front end. And not only that, the old ASM's got the engine exposed here for some odd reason. It still runs, still does its thing, even though the engine is completely exposed for the new Desane. Uh, same thing. It's like with these vehicles, they're basically bulletproof and semi-crash proof in these situations. Like, if the engine's exposed, it doesn't matter one bit. But anyways, they're both brutal crashes, no matter what. So, last part of the video. 
Let's see if Ubisoft will resurrect Driver in a Driver San Francisco or something related by going to Leap of Death and taking his thing to an all-time low. So here we are at Leap of Death and the textures are screwed up. So let me go to World Editor and briefly try to recreate and realign these textures back in things to this new 0.22 update, which has broke the textures yet again because last time when I was on Leap of Death, the textures were basically all broken, but I uh, realigned these like poorly somehow. So let me go ahead and try to redo these textures and then we'll drive off the ramp. A few moments later. All right, so quick change of plans. We're at the car jump arena at the top of the ramp here. I tried finding the textures on Leap of Death, but it took me like, what, two, like 20, 30 minutes just to find the textures, and they weren't even popping up on the textures or terrains folder for some odd reason. I tried finding them, and I couldn't find them. Like, the, the, the textures are just gone in that folder for some odd reason. So we got all Green Knights here. So let's go down the ramp right now, and right quickly, and right so. And like that, we're gonna get a better 0 to 62 and 5.08 seconds at 260.53 feet. That's what we're talking about. And top speed wise, top speed, 165 miles an hour. And we're gonna face plan so it's two times it and get a good front end collision like so. And impact detected, stop the car. And back on the wheels to full time. And anything crazy here? No 80 something miles an hour. Hopped over the pool. Tire busted, still rolling over. And we're gonna land back on our wheels, and the answer is yes. So look at the front of the view. Oh my god, it's been pushed down. Uh, not only that, this looks like flat as hell on the front end, thanks to the front end, like, downward face plant at the bottom to jump there. And the back of the vehicle squished downward pretty good. We got loose polygons, loose everything all over the ground here. Not only that, do these still uh, light up here? So, wait, they were lighting it. Hold on. Bro, these still light up for some odd reason. They're not even connected to the thing, man. I'm confused. They're not connected whatsoever, and they still power on. Like, if I try to accelerate and get out of here. Which I can barely do so. And I'm scraping the wall right now. So, last part of the video, let's drive down as fast as we can, which I did at the ramp here. But instead, we are at the highway portion here. We're going to be crashed down at the last bridge pillar to get a high-speed crash test going, which we didn't do early in the beginning of the video of BMG when I missed a gantry at West Coast USA. But now we get the opportunity to crash this again at a very high speed. So, stop now. 160 miles are right at the vehicle's top speed, so 60 times slow-mo all the way at a semi-direct front-end collision. So, position yourselves right here, Alt-U to hide the UI, reset the Alpha V just a tad by hitting the 5 button on my right keyboard. So, resume physics in 3, 2, 1, go. 16 all the way. Jesus, that's a deadly front-end collision. We got all the parts all over the place for the brake lights. We are doing a front flip, so 8 times to 4 times are we... They go on our roof, so whatever. And we somehow got the engine still running for some odd reason. And oh my drivetrain. Oh, hold on a minute. Dude, the drivetrain has been poking out way up in the ceiling right here. We got the part of the rear suspension of the rear axles or whatever just popped out. And <laughs> engine's still going to put power on the wheel. So we flipped this up, right? Uh, increase the strength. And it just throwed us out to our left side. And there goes the tire. And we're still rolling over, and we rolled back on our two out of four wheels. So can it still drive despite this extreme collision? So briefly before we start driving, front end has to go off because impact detected stoppy car. Finally got the quote right. The front of the engine is a uh, big time exposed right here, and we're moving on our own for some odd reason. And interior wise, let's check it out. Go to relative view, seat, and uh huh. We would have been dead whatsoever. And the last thing like I just said, it could have still drive. So briefly, hit the gas. So we're putting the power down, and we got the tire off our backs, and no, I can't drive. We got no steering wheels whatsoever, and tire deflated. Can we do the same thing for the back tire? The answer is maybe to maybe not. So that's all we're going to do is just do a standing burnout and make a big black mark in the concrete, and that'll be it with this vehicle. It's just destroyed and undrivable, and you can't do nothing about it. So that'll do it with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game, and BMG Drive with the ASYM Desane 3.0T, straight out of Driver San Francisco. For a recreation of this vehicle, this seems somewhat spot on despite having the wrong body style of this vehicle, but this is the closest body style that I could find in Automation and just recreate it using any available assets from the vanilla assets to the modded ones to get this here vehicle. And overall, this vehicle, it's a not too bad for performing vehicle despite the rear end kicking out with the ECS turned to sport mode or off because of a powerful V6 turbo engine, but it's a nice car. That's all I could say about it. Great performing car, somewhat ecological, and pretty sporty at the same time. 
And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this has been Mr. Dragon 0 I'll see you in the next video.